Crystallis is one of the most underrated action RPGs of all time. Crystallis has been completely and unfairly overlooked in the past 20 years. When people think of the best RPGs of all time, they think about some games in the Final Fantasy series, some games in the Dragon Quest series, maybe a few Persona games. No one goes out and says, oh, Crystallis. People think of the Zelda games, people think of the Fallout games. And I don't get that, I mean, it's pretty much a consensus that everyone who's played it has said it's a fantastic game, but very few people actually place it in their top 10. What is Crystallis? Well, it's a post-apocalyptic RPG. Think of this as a game that mixes fantasy and post-apocalyptic stories. I think the best way to describe it is like Fallout meets Legend of Zelda. It's not nearly as dark and gory as Fallout, in fact it's not dark and gory at all, but it does take place a hundred years after this nuclear war, and your character comes out of this what is presumably a vault, and now he has to be the hero that saves this mutated Earth. And by the way, speaking of this mutated Earth, let's look at the box art of this game. It's probably the best box art I've ever seen. I mean, you're like this hero with a sword and a shield, and you're traversing this completely alien Earth. This Earth that is surrounded by mutated creatures and strange plant life, but at the same time, very beautiful landscapes. I have absolutely no idea how someone can just walk past this game back in 1990 when it was released and not buy it or buy another game over this game. This is absolutely the best box art I've seen. But the game is not just about the superficial cover, in fact the cover represents what the game is very well. There's all sorts of really awesome post-apocalyptic and fantasy environments in this game, all sorts of weird enemies, but the game doesn't give up its traditional RPG feel. I mean, you have towns where you can buy armor, weapons, different herbs to heal yourself, and you even have inns to sleep off wounds you sustain in battle. One thing that I could see turn people off from Crystallis is you have to use your brain in this game. I'll give you an example, a personal example, okay? I kind of reviewed this game more than five years ago. I'm sure people have watched me since then remember. But it wasn't a review. What I did basically is I just turned on Fraps or some other recording software and I just played the game for about 20 minutes. It was really a blind let's play. I've never played the game before. I had no idea what to do. I didn't even know how to equip weapons and armor in the beginning. You know, I was completely lost. And my final verdict of this game was it's like okay, I guess, but nothing special. And that was so stupid of me to say. But the the reason I said it is because I didn't realize I had to use my brain when playing this game. And I'm sure that's what a lot of people who don't really care much for this game don't realize. They think the game is just kind of confusing and there's no clear way to get past some things, but there is. See, this game relies on performing actions and going through events in a specific preset pattern. I'll give you an example. Your first quest is to get this windmill started. But you can't get the windmill to start until you wake up this windmill guard. But to wake him up, you have to buy this thing in a store that wakes people up. This trinket. But before the guard's sleeping body actually appears, you have to go talk to this other guy in another cave. But before that, you actually have to buy the trinket. So if you don't do things in this preconceived pattern, if you just go right to the passage leading to the windmill, the sleeping guard will not be there. If you just go right to the cave of the guy you have to talk to before the guy appears, he's not going to be there either. The first thing you have to do is to buy the actual trinket that wakes up the guard, and then the guy you have to talk to before you go see the guard appears. But the thing is, you start off with no money, so... Naturally, your first instinct is to just progress from the first town into different crevices, into different passageways and caves, and to see how the story progresses. So you go to this cave where a guy appears only after you buy something in the town, and you can't buy that thing in the town until you kill enough enemies to raise enough money to buy it. And the guy in the cave simply won't be there. And already, half the people will get completely lost, because this is confusing. Why does the guy only appear when you buy a trinket to wake up another guy that has nothing to do with this guy in this completely other cave. 
So at worst, there is a lot of trial and error, but at best, this trial and error somewhat makes sense. I'm not saying all the time. Sometimes following a certain preset pattern simply doesn't make much logical sense, and is just there to make the game artificially longer. But this is the reason a lot of people, myself included, more than five years ago, think this game isn't really that great, simply because a lot of people wouldn't be in the mindset, or wouldn't even know about the preset patterns of things you have to do in a certain order. But this is the only really bad thing in the game, and I don't even want to call it a bad thing, I just want to call it a sometimes confusing thing, but ultimately a thing that requires some intellect to get past. I guess, you know what, let's call it like a hurdle. Let's call this a firewall. This is the only firewall that would prevent people from calling this a really great game and would just put the game away and never play thinking it's just a mediocre game. But everything else in the game is just fantastic. The scenery, all the weapons and armors that you can buy, all the different enemies, and all the cool bosses, and all the different places you traverse. The only bad thing about the scenery is a lot of indoor places, like corridors, they more or less look the same, they just have a different color like you go into one cave and it would just be like orange rocks and then you go into another cave and the rocks will have a more purple hue but it would basically be the same cave but in terms of the outside world there's a ton of different beautiful environments and a ton of really different enemies I mean I'm almost surprised at how much variety there is in this Nintendo game I'm almost shocked this game can handle all the variety I think another firewall this game has is it's unforgiving it really is one of those old-school RPGs it's not just a game where you have to use your brain and think about what you're gonna do first and how that's gonna affect the next part of a certain quest progression. This is also a game where a lot of the enemies and bosses are very hard. Not so much the enemies. See, if you're just swinging your sword around, the enemies could become pretty difficult. But if you hold down the hit button, your sword powers up and after a few seconds, you can actually shoot a projectile from your sword. And this basically completely destroys like 90% of the non-boss enemies. Simply because most enemies can hit you at melee range, and those non-boss enemies that don't hit you at melee range, most of the time their projectiles are pretty slow and you can see them coming from a mile away. The only problem I've really had with non-boss enemies in this game is really fast enemies like bats. Because bats are just flying all around, you can barely hit them. They fly past walls and you can't shoot through walls with the weapons I've had. So a lot of times, the bats are completely immune to your attacks, and for the short time they're not immune to your attacks, and you power up your sword or you try to run at them and hit them, they just fly out of the way. I found the best strategy for some enemies like bats is to just straight up avoid them. But a lot of non-boss enemies, like really big rock creatures that throw rocks, it's probably in your best interest to kill those, simply because number one, it's easy to kill them, and number two, they give you a lot of EXP and a lot of money. This is another thing you have to keep in mind, because the game's bosses are fairly hard and unforgiving, you will have to grind a lot. And not just EXP to raise your attack power and your defense and your hit points, but also grind money to buy new and better equipment. Sometimes you just need the best equipment to beat a boss. Some bosses are completely unbeatable, unless you're just decked out beyond belief. Also, the bosses have patterns, so it's not just about being completely decked out. This is another thing where you have to use your brain. You have to memorize the bosses pattern. The bosses are basically like Mega Man bosses in this game. They're pretty challenging, they're pretty hard. At the end of a boss fight, you probably won't have a lot of life left, but when you beat a boss, it is incredibly satisfying. And it's the same thing for when you complete a quest. Like again, going back to the first quest, when you drudge through the mud, when you go all around the level, when you realize you have to buy the trinket that wakes up the guard, and then the guy with the beard will appear in another cave, and then you can talk to the guard, and then the guard will give you a key, which starts the windmill, which explodes a hole in a cave, then you can progress through that hole in the cave to the next quest in town. When you figure out this intellectual but ultimately confusing pattern, it is so satisfying. I mean, when I got the windmill working, I just started to dance.
ultimately, the best thing that can be said about Crystallis is it's just a fantastic RPG that's really fun to play. It's very scenic, it has a really unique and great mood. Like I said, Zelda meets Fallout. It's a very hard game, it's often a very confusing game, but all of that is just the right amount of old-school Nintendo challenge that is sorely missing in games today. Crystallis is one of the best action RPGs of all time, and that's why it gets an official Stan Birdman rating of a 9.1 out of 10. Thanks for watching, goodbye my friends.